Hello friends, thank you for joining us today. I've got a very, very important message to share. America is at war. That's right, you heard me right, America is at war. Whether we realize it or not, we really, really are. I mean, I don't know why uh, we, we go about this life so nonchalant like and carefree, but uh, we, we live like we have no enemy. But friends, we do have an enemy. And, and he is an unseen enemy. Thank God the Bible tells us about it uh, in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Friends, we are living in a war zone. And, uh, and it's worse than you could ever imagine because the effects of this war is, is eternal. The stakes are incredibly high. I mean, we have been dropped behind enemy lines and, we're gonna, and we will not be coming out until Jesus Christ comes back. This battle is real. Our enemy wants to destroy everything good in our life. Every, everyone that we hold dear, everything that we hold precious in our life. Now, we've all seen it. You know, for all the effects right now, I mean, the battle is really heating up. I mean, you think about everything that's happened just in 2020 here. It's amazing. I mean, we have watched families get ripped apart. We have, wa we have, watched, we have watched friendships being ripped apart. I mean, I, I remember when COVID first come in. I mean, it's bad enough that we have this disease. And it's horrible because we've got innocent people that have lost their lives. We've got people that have had, that are out of work. Uh, we, we have people that, that uh, the kids are, you know, can't even receive a regular education because of all the craziness. And we've, we've seen all that. But one thing that I want to point out, have you noticed the, the divide? Have you noticed how it seems like everybody is kind of dividing? They're getting polarized here on different point of views. We have, and I've watched friendships. I've watched people that have been friends for, for a long time really get upset at each other. I've heard of people said that they have, they have been dropped from Facebook because, 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 uh, because people are get upset at this point of view or that point of view. And then, and then if that's not enough, uh, and then we have all this racism uh, that's terrible. I mean, we should not ever have racism. It, it comes from the enemy. Let's go ahead and say that. And, uh, but it's, think of the division that this has caused here, friends. And then now we got the politics. I mean, it, it's just so much separation. This is the enemy. He's wanting to divide us so that he can conquer us. Friends, we've got to look to Jesus. He is the only hope that we have. And so, but God has given us a weapon in this warfare that we can fight against this. And that weapon is prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's ask for Jesus' help, okay? Father in heaven, Lord, if there was ever a time that we needed your help, we realize that we're not wrestling with flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, not of this earth. We're no match, Lord, so we need your help. Would you give us Weapons, would you give us protection that we can protect our family, uh, that, we can, that we can share this good news with others today. So please speak to our heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Open up your Bible, if you would, to Matthew chapter 26, and I'm going to be picking up in verse 36. Matthew chapter 26 and, and verse 36. You know, when we define prayer, you need to define prayer in the language of war because this is all a battle. And what I want to do is I want to share with you a scene on the front line of this war uh, around 2,000 years ago. This happened 2,000 years ago, a moment in time. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Now I want to pause right here. Have you ever felt like you was about to die on the inside? 
I mean, it was that dark, that hopeless. You just felt like you were going to die. We can learn from the Bible, from the Word of God. When that happens, what do we do? Pray. Pray. That's what Jesus did. Let me go on. And he says, Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face. And he prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it were possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour, Peter? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayer was the weapon that Jesus used here. And he told us, and he told Peter, and he's telling us today, watch and pray. Open your eyes. Jesus, now think about this. Jesus was on his way to the cross to die for us. And he's saying here, he's just being honest. He says, he says I don't want to go through this. I don't want to go through this. Is there any other way? Friends, it was prayer that gave Jesus the strength he needed to go on and say, not my will, but your will be done. See, prayer is, opens up a door. It opens up a channel for God to work in our life. And He was strengthened through that prayer with His fathers. And Jesus told His disciples, and you and I today, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. See, this battle is real, friends. And you know where it's fought? Right between our ears. There's a battle going on right here in your heart. It's so important. Jesus is saying, watch and pray. Keep your eyes on me, Jesus is saying. Not on all the distractions of the world. Not on, not on, uh, not on everything going over here on Fox News and everything going on on CNN. There's two polar opposites uh, right there. But, but Jesus said, no, what's going to help you through this hard times is keep your eyes on me. And I'll get you through it. You know, there are times when the very most important thing that we can do is pray. That's right. There are times when, when you've got this going on in your life, and you've got that going on in your life, and friends, the only option that's going to help you is to pray. Now think about it. Jesus had only a few hours left. And what was He doing with that valuable time? Just a few hours before he was going to go to the cross. And what was he doing? What was he doing to prepare himself for the cross? He was praying. He was praying, friends. That's what he was doing. I'm convinced that one of the most powerful weapons God has given us in this, in this spiritual warfare that's going on right now is prayer. You know, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is found in Philippians chapter 4 in verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. And it basically starts out like this. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, no matter what you're going through, carry it to God in prayer. And, and He promises us when we do that He will give us peace that passes human understanding and that He will guard our hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. So when we pray, God is giving us a picture that He that He puts up a fortress around us to protect us. Friends, that's what we need right now while America is at war. We need, we need to be surrounded. We need to have a fortress. We need to be completely circled by Jesus, relying completely on Him. The fiery darts will come from this direction. The, the bombs will come from that direction. But God will be a fortress to us, a fortress to our mind, a fortress to our heart, and will give us hope during these times that we're going through. You know, today what I want to do is I want to share with you a powerful tool, a powerful weapon that God has given us in, his, in, in the Bible. Uh, and, that, and a lot of people don't even know anything about it. So I'm glad that you're watching here today. It, it, uh, it, it, it's seldom used, but it is like an atomic bomb uh, on Satan. You know what it is? Prayer and fasting. That's right. Prayer and fasting. Now, I know that prayer and fasting works because I'm a product of prayer and fasting. 
That's right. That is the reason I'm here before you right now is because somebody prayed and fasted for me. So I know prayer and fast works. And I want to look at a story that's found in, in three of the Gospels. Found in, it's found in Matthew, it's found in Mark, and it's found in Luke. But what I want to do is I want to, I want to look at Mark's point of view, and I'll bring in, I'll bring in some of uh, Luke and Matthew's also. But let's turn to, to, Ma, uh, to Mark chapter 9 and verse 14. Mark chapter 9 and verse 13. And I want to, I want to, I want to use this, this scripture right here because I like how Jesus just really lays this out here, the picture He gives us. Mark chapter 9, picking up in verse 14. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed, and running to him, they greeted him. And he asked the scribes, What are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who, is, who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, he gashes at the teeth, and he becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered in, in, uh, them and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him uh, to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground, and he wallowed, foaming at the mouth. And, and so, so he asked his father, How long has, has this been happening to him? And, and he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown, thrown him both into the fire and to the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us, help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit and saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and he lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and in fasting. Picture this, friends. The dad running up to Jesus. Help me. Help me. Because your disciples are not. Matthew's account says he falls to his knees at the feet of Jesus. Luke's account says he cried out from the crowd, I beg you. I beg you, help me, for he is my only son. My only son. Total desperation. Tears uh, is what the Bible says. The tears in his eyes. Could you picture that? Could you imagine what they had went through as a family? The care that would have been required to take care of this young man. And, and if that weren't enough, in those days, sickness such as this right here, was thought to be a direct result of sin. And if it happened to the child, then it was spending everything he had on physicians, priests, self-proclaiming exorcists. But, but all that just made the situation worse. It made it appear more hopeless. Probably there was no hope whatsoever. And then he heard about Jesus. He heard about Jesus and His disciples. You know, and he heard about the miracles that, that his disciples and Jesus were performing, the miracle healings that were taking place, all that they were doing. But the, the Bible doesn't say how far they traveled, but, but it probably didn't matter. He would have traveled ever how far it took because it was his only hope that he had. I mean, and you can only imagine the, the, the letdown that the father must have had when the disciples could do nothing. 
I mean, they couldn't do anything. By the time Jesus had come down from the, from the mountaintop, everything appeared totally helpless. I, maybe, I mean, Satan was having a, a heyday here. I mean, maybe thought the Father, There's, there is no hope. I mean, I could just picture what was going on in his mind. Maybe this is just such a bad case here that, that there's no hope for my son. There, there, no one can help him. So that's why probably he, in a half-hearted way, uh, when the poor father came up to Jesus, he says, if, you remember that word, if, if, if you can do anything, have pity, have pity on us and help us. Let me ask you a question. Do you ever feel that way? Do you, do you ever feel totally helpless? No hope, overwhelmed, totally discouraged. Have you ever been knocked down, or I call sucker punch, right in the gut so hard that, that it's taking your breath away? It just, it just seems like there's no hope, no door of possibility opened up for the future. Sometimes, friends, things can go really bad, especially with everything going on now. You know, Sometimes things just don't seem like they are going to get any better or they even could get any better. You know, sometimes you feel like your prayers are just going up, but they evaporate even before they get to the ceiling. So what do you do with the silence of God? What do you do? What do you do when, when your world's falling apart and, and there just don't seem to be any hope in sight? that things are going to get any better. Have you noticed in this story right here that Jesus, He, he doesn't cast the demon right out. He, that's not what He does. There seems to be a delay here taking place. In all the other cases in the Bible, when you, when you, when you study the Bible, He just speaks the word and boom. I mean, the, it's done. He's healed. What is Jesus trying to teach us here? He's trying to teach us something here. Here's the message. Listen up. Going back, if you go back to the end, verse 28, verse 28, it says, when the disciples, when the disciples, when they got to the house, they asked him, remember this? Why? Why, Jesus? Why could we not cast him out? Why can we do it? I mean, we've been doing it before. Why can't we do it now? And remember in verse 29, Jesus said, Key, key point, this kind cannot come out but by prayer and fasting. I mean, I always thought, I always thought that, that this young man had such a big bad demon that, that, that they had to pray and fast really hard to kick him out. But let's look a little deeper here at the Bible. Remember, remember the dad's desperate cry? Jesus, if, remember that word, if, if you can, if you can help us. If, in verse 23, Jesus responds to that. He says, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible. And then the dad cries out in verse 24, I believe. Help my unbelief. See, friends, the father realized it. He realized what the real issue was before anybody else did in that deep, dark valley that day. He cried out. He, it's like a light bulb going off. You could picture it, a light bulb. He got it. Lord, help me. I believe, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. You see, Jesus saw the real issue before anyone else did. It was a lack of belief. That's right, a lack of belief. The problem was not the demon. The disciples had had the power and authority to cast, through faith to cast out demons. And they had been doing that. They had been doing it. 
Friends, what it was, it was a lack of genuine faith in God. The real problem was that that day, that morning, that morning, the devil had managed to cast out from everyone there in that valley all true-hearted trust in God, in the Son of God. Do you ever have one of those mornings? Or one of those days? The day before, you were on top of the mountain. Your faith was soaring. You, you knew that God could get you through anything. And then, boom! All chaos hits in your life. Everything's going wrong. And all of a sudden, you find yourself in total darkness. Friends, if that's your case, I want you to know that God's still there. He's still there. The same God that's on top of the mountain is with you in the valley. Even when you can't see Him, friends, He is still there and He loves you and He cares about you. See, Jesus nails the real issue at the very beginning in verse 19. Jesus says, O faithless generation, faithless, unbelieving generation, how long will it take you to trust Me? How many things do you have to go through to where you know that I'm always going to be there, that you can count on me, that I will get you through it? Let's go back to verse 29 at the end again. This kind, this kind, was it this kind of big bad demon? No, friends. This kind of unbelief. This kind of unbelief. This kind of unbelief does not come out but by prayer and fasting. You see, that day, everyone was focusing on the wrong thing. They were focusing on the wrong thing. They were all focusing on the problem rather than the problem solver. You know that's easy to do in life. When you've got all these fiery darts coming at you from every direction, when, when, you're, when, when you're getting hit with an atomic bomb over here and you're getting hit with a fiery dart from over there at this angle and, 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 and you've been sucker punched right in the gut, friends, I know sometimes it's hard to look to Jesus. But Jesus is saying, if you do, I will get you through whatever you're going through. I will get you through whatever's happening in your life. The reason that Jesus was waiting that day was for one, just one in that entire crowd to realize that our demons will be exorcised when we exercise our faith in God. That's right, friends. When we put total faith in God. Listen, friends. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter how hard the enemy attacks you, you will always have a choice to choose God, to have faith in Him, to, let, to, to just grab a hold of Him and say, God, I'm going, I know you're going to get me through this. See, the power of choice God has given to men. Satan can't take that away. And when you choose God, when you choose to have faith in Him, when you choose to stand on the side of faith, even when you can't see it, Friends, when you can't see and understand God's hand, you can always trust His heart. You can always trust His heart. Think about this. Do we or do we not believe that God loves us? Do we or do we not believe that God is there in every situation going on in our life? He's there. The Bible promises us that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrews 13, 6. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Even in the silence, friends, God is still there. Do we trust Him in our life? Even in the dark times. Friends, I believe the message here today, America at war, because we are at war. We're at war against an enemy that we cannot see, that wants to destroy our life that wants to destroy our family. Friends, if you are having one of those dark valley moments, 
God is suggesting that you pray and fast. Just, just pray and fast. Do you get to the point that you believe that God can get you through whatever you're going through? That is what he's, that's the, the message right here. Friends, one of the best things we can do is to look to Calvary. Look to Calvary. I promise you that will help you. You know, it's pretty dark on Calvary's hill. Pretty dark when Jesus was facing Calvary. It was so dark that Jesus could not see past Calvary. But He made a choice. He made that choice to live and die by faith according to the Word of God. Jesus realized who He was in Scripture. And He realized that He was the Lamb of God. And He moved forward in faith. No, He didn't want to. He said, Father, if if there's any other way, let this cup pass from Him. But, But as He prayed, God strengthened Him. to to have hope and be obedient to the Word of God. And God helped him through what he was going through. And because of that, you and I have hope here today. We have hope. Even though Jesus couldn't see, he trusted completely in his Father, in his Father's plan. In closing, everyone watching here today, everyone watching has something that's really on your heart. You do. We all do. Maybe it might be family, it could be friends, it could be our health, it could be our work, it could be school. Maybe you prayed about something. And you prayed about it and you prayed about it and prayed about it. No answer. Nothing. Silence. I want to challenge you today. I want to leave you with a challenge. I want to encourage you to make a choice. Make a choice. I'm going to believe that God believes that He can solve my problem. Are you willing to start there? Just believe that God believes that He can take care of this situation, that He can get you through it. And I want to challenge you to to just say in your heart, I'm going to choose to believe that He loves me and has not forgotten me. And He's going to bring resolution to this problem according to His wonderful, eternal, hope-filled plan for my life. Can I pray for you about this? I want to pray for you that God, through His Holy Spirit, because you are seeking Him, because you have made a choice to seek Him, that He will pick you up and let you know that He's going to get you through this dark valley that maybe you're going through. Or maybe you have a friend. Maybe you've got a friend that you know is going through a dark valley right now. Would you please share this with them? They need hope. They need hope. That, that They need the truth that there's a God that loves them and a God that cares about them and that's going to help them through this. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, I thank you, dear God, for your love and for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we choose to believe that you love us enough to get us through whatever's going on in our life. And dear God, I pray if there's someone out there this faith is shaky right now, that maybe they have doubts in their heart right now, that you would put it on their heart to pray and fast do they get the point where they're at, where they can believe that you can do everything that you have promised them that, that, that you would do in their life, that they, would, that they would be fully convinced that you're able to fulfill all the promises that you've given them. And I thank you for that. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless America. May he bless America and you too and your family. The best is yet to come because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. Hope to see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.